China's ambassador to France openly denied the existence of 14 countries in Europe. Let's discuss what he said. Welcome to China Insider, I'm David Zhang. Before we start today's video, I recently went to a performance in New York and uh, at the Purchase Performing Arts Center. It's called Shen Yuan Performing Arts. Now, briefly, I mentioned this last year, but if you're ever interested in Chinese culture and want to see what the history of China is like before communism, well, you better go see Shen Yuan. There's more shows before they conclude this year's tour. And I pretty much go every year to see the show. The reason is, as you know, we cover a lot on China and I love the Chinese culture. It's a great opportunity for you guys to also get to learn what the real authentic nature and the history of China is like through performing arts. Of course, we know the performance is beautiful and the production is world class. So pretty much that's my go to show to every year. Uh, I know that this week in the United States, they're performing at the Stanford uh, Theater, I believe it's called, in Connecticut, on the East Coast, and then uh, around the same time, also in Baltimore, Maryland. And what you can do is go on ShenYuan.com and check out if there is still a show available near you. So I think only a handful of cities are left for their tour this year. But if there isn't a show near you and you still want to learn more about Chinese culture, well, ShenYuan actually has an online program, uh, this platform called ShenYuan Zuopin. Uh, basically, it's an exclusive content platform providing some of the past performances, singing, and videos that will help you understand what Shen Yun is, as well as some of the behind the scenes of the performance. So what you could do is go on there. You can subscribe for $99 right now for a discounted price for the whole year. I will leave a link in the description below so you can check it out. And it's a really great way for you to learn about culture of China before you know, the CCP took over. And I think it's a really worthwhile investment for your whole family. And it's very kids friendly. So definitely recommend you guys go check it out. ShenYunZuoPin.com. All right, on to today's show. This man is China's ambassador to France. And you might not recognize him with his wolf helmet on. Here, I'll take it off. But yes, that is a human being under there. His name is Lu Shaiye. He's not a dog. But Lu made some outrageous barking comments live on TV when he was asked about China's view of Crimea and Russia in an interview for the French LCI network last week. When the interviewer says that Crimea belongs to Ukraine, Lu responded by suggesting that the issue was not clear cut and that countries such as Ukraine could not rely on international law to defend their sovereignty. He then says, quote, even these former Soviet countries don't have an effective status under international law because there is no international agreement under international law to concretize their status as sovereign countries. Basically, he says that the 14 states that split and formed their own nations following the dissolution of the Soviet Union are not real countries. Interesting. Well, by this logic, Russia is also a former Soviet Union state. Does that mean the CCP doesn't recognize Russia either? Of course, they wouldn't dare to say that. This is just Lu saying the quiet part out loud of what the Chinese Communist Party actually thinks. Lu is a repeat offender of speaking out in what many now know as wolf warrior diplomacy, which is aggressive messaging, or what I like to call being the barking dog for the CCP. Last year, he even made remarks on that same LCI TV network saying that after taking Taiwan, they will send people to, the re, uh, to a re-education camp so that, what well, Lu says, after reunification, secessionist thoughts must be erased from their minds. His comment also draws a lot of opposition, especially from the three Baltic nations, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. Of course, these nations were sovereign nations before the USSR actually invaded and took them uh, as the Soviet states. But uh, before today, many countries were also demanding an explanation from Beijing after Lu uh, questioned the independence of former Soviet countries like Ukraine, Poland, Romania, Moldova, you know, Lithuania, etc. But Lithuanian Foreign Minister Landis Burgess says that all three Baltic states will summon Chinese ambassadors or charge to demand they explain the policy on their countries, meaning that they want to ask, does the Chinese government recognize what Liu said? Now, keep in mind, though, China has official diplomatic relationship with, if not all, most of these former Soviet states. And that alone tells us that this is a lie. Liu's remarks show that the CCP has two-faced behaviors all the time, but uh, let's kind of dissect what exactly those are. On the surface today, for example, the Chinese foreign ministry had distanced itself from Lu's remarks. Uh, they ignore, though, the question about Crimea. News outlets asked spokesperson Mao Ning specifically about Crimea, to which she basically gave the same answer, saying that China respects sovereignty, etc. But if she is really giving us the truth, why not just directly address the situation in Crimea? Does China recognize Russia's annexation of Crimea? So then are we to believe on the surface that the CCP would actually distance itself from the ambassador? Of 
course not. In fact, what Liu said publicly on live TV is really the private thinking of most of the top CCP officials. Uh, why? Well, because their actions have clearly reflected it. So far, the Chinese Communist Party has not condemned Russia's invasion of Ukraine. It has even helped Russia to win by supplying lethal aid and arms. Now, that's not a country that actually respects the territorial sovereignty of other nations, right? Still, it wasn't really a slip of the tongue from Ambassador Liu. In fact, if he was, uh, it, he probably would have backtracked it during the interview, as a diplomat probably would. He didn't. What this indicates is that the CCP truly believes Russia can and should restore the states it once had during the Soviet Union period, holding influence, perhaps even in some cases, being able to annex certain Eastern European states. Uh, now, in turn, this would generate a lot of influence in the Eurasia sphere for both Russia and China. And it actually fits the context of what the CCP calls rising east, falling west. So Liu was towing the party line that the CCP has embarked on since the turn of the last decade. Starting from the end of the financial crisis in 2008, China under the CCP has concluded that the West is failing and the East will rise. From there, and since she came to power in 2012, inside the party, including Xi himself, has been talking about reshaping the world order. And of course, this has reiterated in multiple instances by the Chinese officials. Uh, Xi Jinping openly says that he wants to challenge the existing international order. And Qing Gang, the foreign minister of China last week, called on nations to follow China's modernization, which basically means our way of growing our country is much better than that of the West. These instances all suggest that the CCP is creating a system in which the East, in this case including Russia, and many authoritarian and totalitarian rulers can align together to form an alternative version to, that where, to the one where the US is in control. And this further explains to us why the CCP refuses to condemn Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Xi Jinping likely agreed with Putin that the combat to get rid of the Western uh, influences in East Asia or the Eastern Bloc, they must also at the same time resist Western influence around all what they consider it is the Eastern sphere and um, at the same time also expanding the influence in the form of territory. China wants to make a move on Taiwan, of course, and Putin wants to restore the so-called Greater Russia Empire. And China is willing to sacrifice diplomatic relations with these independent nations if that means Russia can receive a greater influence in the region. Just see Ukraine, right? Uh, here's the, another way we can confirm that this thinking is true. Today, the Chinese embassy in France released a statement in French stating that the ambassador's comments were only his personal beliefs and don't represent that of China. Well, isn't that funny? Since when do ambassadors and diplomats stop representing their country on live TV? Somehow double standards apply to the Chinese ambassadors now? Let's not argue that, but we should talk about this. This statement is only in French, not in Chinese. In fact, you can't find it anywhere in Chinese. That's not a coincidence. It's not on the Chinese version of the embassy website in Paris, or is it on the main foreign ministry website? Well, we're talking about the two-faced uh, CCP, right? This is their cunning side. While they so-called distance themselves from Liu in public statements made in French, they privately are silent to the Chinese population, actually promoting that idea of what Liu said. What does that tell us? Their domestic propaganda actually encouraged this behavior and the substance in Liu's statement also. Liu himself even said this before, quote, the standard we evaluate our work is not how foreigners see us, but how domestic people see us. So in fact, in China on social media, people are praising the ambassador for his remarks about loving the country, calling him a sharp blade for China's diplomacy on the world stage. The domestic propaganda portrays Liu as a hero of the CCP. And why would the CCP allow this type of cheering to exist? It's actually pretty obvious, because they wanted to. So a group of about 80 European Parliament legislators are asking to expel Liu. But I really doubt that Macron would do that to anger China. And if it were any other country, Let's just think rationally. If an ambassador said something like this, the government of that country would have recalled them first and fired them immediately. If the comments they made were not the official tones, then why the heck are they the ambassadors? And if they were just some personal remarks, well, what the heck are they doing representing your country? So what has the CCP done so far? Well, other than offering some half-assed replies on the foreign ministry side, nothing much. Even this has gotten many people to say that, oh, just say that, you know, this was a strategic blunder and that we should just follow the official statement which they have released saying that it was some personal comment. It doesn't represent the official stance of the CCP. Well, actually, they're getting fooled by China. Uh, China's official stance is that of lying to you. So we have to recognize the true beliefs of the CCP.
Because again, as I said, that's actually what they're thinking. The CCP does not respect territorial integrity. I mean, before Russia invaded Ukraine, China was even doing a lot of the trades and partnerships with Ukraine. And it didn't stop Xi from letting Putin attack, did it? So before we end, let's talk a little bit about France, because I think there's some joke here somewhere about Macron visiting China, Macron getting the embarrassment here, and Macron, what he's going to do in the future. So after the interview, uh, the French government responded on Sunday by saying that it has full solidar solidarity with its allied countries affected, which it said had acquired their independence after decades of oppression under communism. But um, what Ambassador Liu said is really a slap in the face to Macron, right? Who went to China to try to charm Xi Jinping into stopping Putin. Not only did that fail, he himself, Macron, ended up getting charmed and was fed uh, this great reception to feed Macron's ego. This whole event basically confirmed to us one thing. China and Russia are allies. They will not end the war for the benefit of Europe. If Russia invaded the Baltic states tomorrow, is there anybody in Europe who would seriously believe that the CCP would somehow condemn them? Well, if they do, perhaps Macron would believe it. Then I'm sure somebody in China would love to sell Macron a bridge. Those that don't buy the lies, however, like the former Soviet states that actually know what being under communism rule feels like, will be further emboldened to start arming themselves against a two-front threat, Russia and China. All right, that's it for today's episode of China Insider. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe to our channel and like this video. It'll help us grow. And also make sure to comment below what your thoughts are on today's topic. And before we go, just another reminder, check out shenyun.com or shenyunzuopin.com, which you will find a lot of exciting content that has to do with great classical Chinese culture and authentic ones before communism. All right, I'm David Zhang. This is China Insider. We'll see you next time.